Kazbek Kops, named after a dormant volcano, were developed in the Czech Republic and are considered something of a super SARS, bringing aromas of citrus, sweet fruits and berries. I was curious to learn what a beer brewed with only Kazbek hops would taste like. To find out, I'm brewing a pale lager with Kazbek added as the bittering, flavour and aroma additions. Then I'm serving the beers to tasters and collecting data on what qualities a Kazbek hopped lager imparts in beer. My name is Martin Keane and this is The Brewlosophy Show. This is my first time brewing a Hop Chronicles Pale Lager and the recipe's not too complicated. I just needed to raid my Pilsner bin. I have got here 11 pounds of Pilsner. Specifically, this is modern Pilsner from Epiphany Craft Malt. I've got about seven and a half gallons of reverse osmosis water here. And then for the water salts, I have got three grams of calcium chloride, four grams of gypsum. I'm gonna be mashing this one at 154 Fahrenheit or 68 Celsius. And I'm gonna mash for an hour. When most brewers think of Czech hops, it's likely the noble variety known as Sars that comes to mind. Kazbek can be thought of in much the same way, but, well, bigger, a more aromatic, bolder Sars. While Kazbek hops have been on the market since 2008, they came to life back in 1984 when a wild Russian variety was crossed with the daughter of Sars and Northern Brewer. While typically used as late addition hops, the relatively high alpha acid range of 5 to 8% makes them suitable as a dual purpose hop. And yes, that volcano part is true. Kazbek hops are named after Mount Kazbek, the highest mountain in eastern Georgia. Now, the way the hop schedule works with these pale lager recipes is we assume a 60 minute boil and we're going to add three hop additions at 60 minutes, 30 minutes, and five minutes. Looks like I'm reaching that boil now, so I'm just going to lower the power here. Now for this particular hop, it's a 6.3% alpha acid hop, and I want to get to a total of 20 IBUs. So my five minute and 30 minute addition, that's these guys, 10 grams each. So 10 grams of 30 minutes, 10 grams of five minutes. This is the variable, so this is the bittering hop. It goes in at 60 minutes, and we need as much as we need to get to 20 IBU, which in this case is 17 grams. I'm gonna add that in now. Set a timer for one hour. At the end of the boil, I quickly cooled the wort down by running it from my counter chiller, and now I've put this into the fermenter and connected to glycol and got the wort to where I want it, pitching temperature, which is 64 Fahrenheit, that's 18 Celsius. Ready to pitch the yeast. I am using Global, this is L13 from Imperial Yeast. The recommended yeast temperature for this is 46 to 56 Fahrenheit, but here at Brewlosophy, we take lager yeast temperature ranges as merely a guidance. We like to ferment warm. We've done all of our THC lagers warm at 64. If you don't think that's a good idea, check out some of our experiments to see if it seems to work and it just speeds things along a bit. So I'm gonna add this in. And it seems to work just fine. Three weeks later, I cold crashed the beer and pressure transferred it to a sanitized keg. The beer had finished at 1.007 OG, giving an ABV of around 5.9%. Now, before presenting the beer to tasters, I decided to give it a try myself. Here's the beer. Now I did wonder this being a pale lager, I didn't add a ton of hops to this. And I was just wondering, really am I gonna get much on aroma or flavor at all? But uh, I've caught a few of these and actually I'm quite surprised there definitely is some stuff going on here. Now on the aroma, I'm picking up citrusy notes, I would say maybe a touch of lemon, that sort of citrus, but also a little bit of spice. So this is what makes it such an interesting hop, I think is you do have a little bit of spicy fruitiness, if that makes sense. Yeah, so on the flavor, definitely more of that lemon coming through. Already quite pleasant. But it's like lemon and there's somebody sprinkled a little bit of pepper on it, just a touch, just a touch. But there is that spiciness there in the flavor too. Kazbek, I'm quite impressed. 
Now I took this beer along to the homebrew club meet of the White Street Brewers Guild. A total of 21 people participated in the evaluation of this beer, all blind to the hop variety used until after they completed a survey. And what did that survey find? Well, the average aroma and flavor ratings for each descriptor are plotted on this radar graph. Tropical fruit, citrus, and stone fruit were endorsed as being the most prominent by participants. Some participants also noted a floral flavor. Least prominent were pine, onion, berry, and thankfully, catty. Next, participants were asked to rate the pungency or strength of the hop, with most votes in the mild to moderate range. And remember, this was a lager recipe with no dry hop addition, so we wouldn't expect too many votes for extreme here. Tasters were then instructed to identify beer styles they thought the hop would work well in. Pale Ale and Pale Lager received the most votes, which is pretty cool given that this was indeed a pale lager. And then finally, participants were asked to rate how much they enjoyed the hop character on a 1 to 10 scale. This saw the largest distribution of votes. Personally, I'm giving this a solid 6. Overall, I've left with quite a positive impression of Kazbek hops, and I'm certain they'll be finding their way into some of my future recipes. I mean, what's not to love about hops named after a volcano? I'll be back next week with another episode, and until then, Think beer.